Hello, my fellows. Welcome back to the Archipelago. We are going to Echoes of the Future, the Zeratul mission where you run around with him and uh, you caress the Overmind to be like, hey, buddy, how's it going? Uh, you know, it's a great time for everybody involved. We're just going to run on over to grab this base as fast as possible because none of this matters. And then this faithful observer will keep watch. Yeah, bud. Can we talk about the Nexus? It's pretty cool. Look, a pyramid. Some of these abandoned structures remain functional. Ah, yes. The we Nexus and the Assimilator. If only Zeratul could pull probes out of nowhere. This Use your probe whistle. It's not really a whistle that's a horn, Zeratul, but whatever, it worked. There. We get this, and we get that, and then we're going to have a Colossus, which means we can take these two guys, have this follow, and just attack move them over there. I don't actually know if that works. Like, if we just send them on over to mow through stuff, do they actually do it on their own? I'm gonna go do Zeratul things and occasionally keep watch, but most of it is just going to be leaving them to do their own thing so I can learn. You address me. And we're picking up so much money early on. If we use our observers wisely, we can scout the area before putting ourselves oh, yeah. at risk. These guys are doing great. Yeah, the enemies just can't really contest. Oh, this might be a little bit bold. Uh, okay, we need to wait a second for this. Oh, I meant to use that. <laughs> and then we can just get out of here. Glosses are doing great. This guy's doing great as well. He's going to get his shields back, and that'll be fine. And the enemy, because we have the observer here, is just sitting and doing nothing. These warp gates appear to be functional. Let's get Perhaps a couple guys on gas chance. and get a stargate. I will and then I guess we'll bring this mad lad over here and bring these back. We must be prepared to defend our base. The Zerg are on the move. Hmm. Can't quite build that base yet. I want to get my bases saturated as fast as possible because we're... Hey. Hey. Don't do that. Not a fan. I was trying so hard. I thought I got them all. <laughs> Jerks. Getting another gas guys are still very low on economy. So I don't want to build too many guys yet. It would be very easy to overdo it. Where are those Zerglings? They must be gone. All right, pull back. And here we go. Fleet Beacon. We should get a nice little group of guys in a sack. We have three minutes to head up this way, though, and get some of the money on that side. Just clear it out without Zeratul. I think the Colossus can do it on their own. They're fantastic. Honestly, they're better than Zeratul. Is. They're my favorite hero unit. There's more guys on gas, and I cannot get attack and armor upgrades for the Cyber Core, which I think is an oversight. I'm not sure. Yeah, because all these attack and armor upgrades for the Protoss stuff is supposed to be unlocked by default. That is what I was told. Because they didn't want you to have to get specific upgrades for just four missions. But we don't have the air versions. Which is still probably okay. But it is going to make the units a lot worse. <laughs> we'll see. There's some money up here. Then we can head on back. Oh gosh, there's so much cash. This is wonderful. Oh, I did not grab this bonus objective the second time. I should probably do that, and I should probably get this one as well. Doing well in the cash department. And we'll do well in the Stargate department too. Honestly, I think this is going to be a pretty easy mission. I'm just doing what people said they wanted to see. And I think they wanted to see me crush the Zerg here. Apparently without attack and armor upgrades, but they didn't know that. My burden. I can at least get shields for my flyers. <laughs> that'll be that'll be something. Now 
right. You guys here? We were trapped within the gate's energy matrix when it was deactivated. And then we can get the guys over there as well. The Zerg seek to overwhelm us. I've never really focused on this mission so much on the grabbing the upgrades really early, and it seemed not the upgrades, but the as much money as I can instantly, and it seems insanely powerful. Like I obviously knew it was good, but it seems like you might be able to avoid a lot of stuff if you do that. Oh gosh, let's make an Archon. Pull this guy back. This isn't great. We're taking a decent bit of damage here. Oh, that's a lot. Um, swing on over. Blink on up. Use them to soak the shots so the Colossus can take stuff down. And then try to save that building over there. Okay, things have gotten a little bit hectic, but I think we dealt with it enough that it's going to calm down and we'll be fine. Turn Autocast on for the Carrier Interceptors. you got to do that in Wings. You don't have to do that in any other version of the game. Actually, I have no idea if you have to do that in Heart of the Swarm now that I say that. You might. So, I got plus one attack on the ground. Did it apply to the Carrier as well? I can't see. Stop building this. No. It did not. So, we can get shield upgrades. We'll have three, three shields for everybody. And it'll just take literally forever to kill an Ultralisk. Maybe that's what people want. So what I'm going to do here is, first of all, very, very slowly wait here and defend until the next frenzied attack happens. After that, we're going to clear over probably to this base. Take it out and grab it for myself. That'll be good. Let me see, what else do I need? That's really it. Spore crawler doesn't matter. We can send these guys to go get this gas pickup. Hey, over mind. Here comes a Ganthor Thor. Nope, nope, nope. Just fooling ya. Here comes a Ganthor Thor. Nope. Oh, don't worry, man. Don't worry. No, we'd never do that twice, yeah. We're just fooling. There's no Ganthor Thors here. Oh, oh. <laughs> Made you flinch, go for mine. <sighs> you fool. He thinks it happens every time. He doesn't know that we've grown and changed since then. But that's okay. He'll learn eventually. He'll come to like us. He's a good dude at heart. Alright, so... We got triple carrier production going fantastically. We have a little bit of time to waste until the frenzied attack. Probably could afford another starport. The Zerg seek to overwhelm our base. And we're going to be able to start bopping through the enemy very soon because, I mean, this is a lot of carrier already. Four, three, two... There we go. Oh, let's target it down real quick. <laughs> I just... I tried to blink a stalker and I couldn't figure out how. Carrier was in the way. Alright, we'll move north, I guess. Because that's kind of where the army is. Zeratul will act as a defensive guy over here. Because the enemy... I don't think they ever really attack with anything that flies and can detect... And that's really what could beat Zeratul as a flying detector. I guess like a Broodlord and an Overseer or something would be Zeratul's bane. These stalkers are probably going to die. 69 kills. Wow. Let's get a couple cannons too, just, you know. Whatever happens, we don't want to die. And that is the first of the main Zerg bases cleared out. Let me see. 
Where's this guy? Here he is. And we have three whole minutes. My goodness. Let's just keep going. And one of the things that's going to be great is the carrier fleet can just walk through the middle when it needs to get home, so it'll be much faster. And that's very exciting to me. So there is a little bit of a personal project that I would like to do during this mission. And I will explain what it is, I guess, a little bit later. Doesn't really matter right now. We just need to make sure that all these enemies are dead first. It won't be that hard. It won't take that long. It's just something on my bucket list. Ah, uh, the carrier, or the Colossus is dead. What you gonna do? Bring Zero Tool up here. We have a minute 40. How long does it take to get these guys back? Uh, I don't know if it's that long. No, probably not. Plus, we can leave these guys over here. Let's say it takes 40 seconds to get back home, because I am a big fan of just arbitrarily declaring things. And then testing. It's like science, but without <laughs> quality control or brain. Bring these home. Zeratul is heading home as well. We can still not expand over here. Uh, creep. The Zerg are coming. The demon. Let us victory always. Okay, we got 80 interceptors. It's going even higher soon. And we're just gonna have to stop these. Nidus is once again. Should be very easy. So, fun fact, the if you hit the Void Prison on the first Nidus fast enough, the way that it's triggered is Nidus 1 erupts and then unloads, and then the next Nidus pops out. And if you can stop everything, you can completely break that trigger and just invalidate the Frenzied Attack. Okay, carrier's going up the other side. Boom. Boom. I probably don't even need this base, honestly. We are going to get some cannons at it so it doesn't die. Because I don't need it, but I do want it. That's consumerism at its finest. How many workers? 52 workers. Oh, I feel like I could use a bit more. But we're running out of minerals at these bases, so I guess we can't. And honestly, it's mass carrier just crushing through everything. So we're going to blonk on up here. Gas, minerals, minerals. And then Zeratul can talk to us about some prophecy. The second over mine tendril. I said so we got Stimpak for the Marine last time, and then this time... Uh oh. Oh no! Uh, what do we do here? And I accidentally started some voids. How are you doing, Zeratul? You're doing fine. Keep crushing up here, find the void, make sure it's a carrier. Oh, uh, there's no shield battery to save him. We don't have... Oh, there we go. Head up there, my dudes. And this entire area has been dealt with. So, for any of you who have been around for a very long time, you might remember that there was a challenge run on this mission specifically that drove me up the up the wall and that was extermination edition and I will talk to you about why uh these bases are insane up here and the only way to get over is like blinking individual stalkers this is the easier of the bases no, we definitely have to deal with the frenzied attack and the frenzied attacks don't really stop that was the other big problem where you keep having to move back and forth, defending a frenzied attack, and then very slowly shipping people across. 
Was that it? I sense that was a frenzied attack. Satisfaction in a plan set in motion long ago. And Here's the other part. Painlings. Boom, boom, boom. Get on supply blocked. We're just going to keep going up and... Then I guess we can send this carrier plus an observer to clean out this sector. Which needs to be dealt with. And I wasn't actually able to fully complete the run as a result of this mission. And I will show you why at the very end, but I'm doing it. Because I'm very angry, I've held a grudge for like a year now, and I just want it to be something that I've done, and we finally finally have the tool to do so because there were a couple things on this mission that were enemy units that existed and were not reachable by anything except for air units and you just don't have air units on this mission so finish all these stinking hatcheries off i don't care how long it takes to kill a broodlord because that's plus two care base and i can't get my armor upgrades or my attack upgrades get owned ultra so what I had to do in this was blink stalkers up here, and it was only stalkers that could make it over here, and then slowly start taking these areas down. The enemy rebuilds, so if you didn't kill every single hatchery going up this insane death line with Broodlord Ultra Spine Baneling, you had to restart your progress. It was insane. I mined out the entire map in order to do this, and... As I said, this was the easier base. We'll get to the harder one in a bit. And I'll show you why it was even worse. Oh, this is good, though. This makes me feel good about myself. Most people don't even know these bases exist because they don't matter. <laughs> Except if you're doing very specific challenge runs. Uh, okay, so we have... This carrier over here who can now attack down, kill all the burrowed guys. And... Yep, see, they're just rebuilding that hatchery. That should be everything on this island, except the Corruptor. I don't know what's going to happen with this frenzied attack. Oh, Nidus. So, Carrier can come and help. Uh, alright. Oh, those are Ultras. Zeratul, we need you. Oh my goodness. Uh, target that down. Get on over here. Carriers, I guess, go over to the side. It's not like we're going to lose here. It's just going to be a bit unfortunate. We might as well attack into there. We're going to lose this base. Technically, there's 84 gas on the geyser that we're going <laughs> to never have access to. How sad. And this was the worst. So the only way that you can get from this area to this area is blinking right across this chasm one stalker at a time. And they can't provide covering fire. So I had to like have Colossus over here helping as I fed people into the blender right next to a hive. It was insane, and I did it. And I was so proud of myself. And I just everything was phenomenal. It was great. I was feeling like king of the world. Because look at this base. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, it took hundreds of stalkers. And the other one, there was... Oh, gosh, that's a lot of mutas. Yeah, they have a lot of mutas, too. So they stack up against you. The other one has an area you can build a pylon here and then warp onto the high ground once you've established things. This one was such a small area that wasn't super viable and it made reinforcing even tougher. All right, let's take down these hatches first so that they can stop building enemies. They got a hatch, a lair, and a hive. They got the 111 build going on. You know, good Terrans go for a factory, a starport, and a barracks. Good Zerg go for one hatchery, one layer, one hive. 
I actually think it would be interesting if there was a reason to get hives and layers besides the tech. Just having more than one, you know what I mean? Because in the lore, they definitely imply that it is standard Zerg practice for very, very wealthy and powerful Zerg clusters to get multiple hives. That happens all the time in mission design. And it'd be interesting, even if it wasn't like super efficient and ideal, if there was some reason that it's not a bad idea. For example, maybe increased larva regeneration or something. It wouldn't have to be big. Because right now, the only reason that you ever do it as Zerg is if you're playing a matchup and like someone aggressively cheeses you or something, and you need to make sure that your like your layers may be at very low HP and you're just like, okay, I'm gonna get a second one so that I don't lose my tech. Or in a late game scenario. But it feels like there could be something. I know that when you're playing like Stetman, I think that you get like better Stetalite regeneration rate, though that might not be per thing. Now that I think about it, I could just be wrong there. So, what is the reason that I hate this darn mission on? Well, once you've cleared the entire map like this, there's an island over here that you cannot get to with anything. In Extermination Edition, where the goal is to kill all enemy units and buildings, that has nothing besides four creep tumors. And I couldn't do Wings of Liberty Extermination Edition because of that stupid mission. <sighs> Why have I not gotten like any unlocks here? Uh oh. I wonder if things broke again. Well, last time it broke. Oh, Orbital Depots. I sense an end. I must go to the Overmind. Well, last time it worked. So I'll tell you at the beginning of tomorrow's episodes if it's just the thing not telling me. Greetings, brother. But Orbital Depots are nice. Stimpak is nice. Yeah, okay. Uh, let me see. If I mouse over it, it doesn't tell me anything. No, I don't want to launch the mission again. <laughs> um, I think that everything worked out properly. I, Because usually it doesn't fully... The way that the interface works is that it shows if you don't have everything. And it is not showing me that I don't have everything. So, I think, I don't know what I unlocked, but I think I got it. And that means that for tomorrow, we can go to, oops, sorry, StarCraft. <laughs> you close one and it closes both. <laughs> okay. Uh, we can go to Supernova, we can go to In Utter Darkness, or we can go to Media Blitz. Those are the choices. So, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of me finally getting revenge on Challenge Run. I know it probably wasn't that interesting for you, but you know what? Sometimes you got to do stuff for yourself. And that was me today. Peace.